welcome back to my channel. It is time for another installment of The Book Report. This week, we are going to be diving into City of Clowns by Daniel, and I hope that I am pronouncing his last name right, Alarcon, with illustrations by Sheila Alvarado. So let's dive right into the back to see what we're going to be getting ourselves into. Oscar Chino Uribe is a young Peruvian journalist for a tabloid newspaper. After the recent death of his philandering father, he must confront the idea of his father's other family and how much of his own identity has been shaped by his father's questionable decisions. At the same time, he begins to chronicle the life of street clowns, melancholy characters who populate the violent and corrupt city streets of Lima and is drawn into their haunting, fantastical world. So straight from the back, we know that our key player is gonna be Chino as he is affectionately known. And then we're gonna be introduced to his dad who unfortunately passes, uh, who starts the book dead, <laughs> uh, Hugo. And then his dad's mistress or his dad's common law wife, Carmela. Uh, Chino's mom is also in here, uh, but she's kind of just chilling in the background. So, um, this book was published in 2015, and I am almost embarrassed to say is my first ever graphic novel. And by graphic, I mean that there are illustrations that make up the book so i mean there are words and, and then their illustration so um i'm glad that i did take the chance on this book uh just because and i'm gonna go into the story um chino he is someone who is trying to find himself in a sense um, he's an adult now, and the thing that kind of triggers him wanting to piece together different moments of his life uh, with his concerning his dad is that while they're at the hospital, his dad just passed. While they're at the hospital, Carmela, the mistress, and his mom are there. And so Carmela says to him, Chino, I haven't seen you since you were a little boy. And so he, in his mind, he's like, have I seen it? I don't remember meeting you at all. I don't know anything about you. And so um, that just clicks in his brain. It's like, okay, I have to try to go back. Where did I meet her from? Where do I know her from? And so that's when we're kind of introduced to the dad and the life that he led in Lima, uh, which is in Peru. And so, yeah, his dad is not a good guy. And and he's... He... I, I am lacking the words to kind of describe his dad just because um, there are moments when he is a good dad, but then... You know, he is not a good dad in a way because he did end up leaving his family for his second family. And then also, um, we find out that his dad was a contractor and he was the kind of contractor, guys, who would come and work on your house for two weeks and whatever you needed done, you need the roof put in, you need floors remodeled, your bathroom, whatever it is. He'll come and work on your house for two weeks. Two months later, he's going to come and rob you blind. All right, your refrigerator, your stove, your blender, the floors that he put in. Listen, he's, he's coming to take it all. And, you know, he introduces Chino to this life when he's about 14. And so 
uh, Chino, that's when he kind of discovers that his mom, him and he and his mom, they were not seeing the money for these extracurricular rob robberies, burglaries. <laughs> they didn't see any of the money from the sale of these people's stoves and all of that stuff. And so um, eventually he does come to remember where he met Carmela uh, for the first time. And the way that he remembers it uh, is because his dad had told him that that was his tia, his aunt. And so he just kind of filed it away in the back of his mind, but he remembered the, because she was the first black person he had ever seen. And he thought that her skin was burnt. And so he like starts screaming and his aunt and his, and his dad is like, don't be rude. Okay. So that happened, um, which I was kind of like, <laughs> like, I don't know if it was supposed to be funny or what, but, um, so overall, I will say that this book is a great time in the sense that, um, the illustrations really push it forward. It really pushes it forward. You get a good sense of the image that the author himself is trying to create and that he does create. At the end of the book, there is an afterword, which is kind of a behind the scenes look at how this book even came to be, how it was developed over time. And then also it's included some of the first sketches uh, the, process, the the first beginning sketches for what becomes the overall illustrations. And they would start mowing the grass. Anyways, um, but overall, I really did enjoy this book. It is moving. I finished it in about an hour uh, just because some of the pages are just illustrations. There are no words on it. So I finished in about an hour, but I did go back and just kind of reflect on the illustrations. And it, it does a good job of making you think about life and loss and, you know, moving forward and learning to cope with different things. So have you read it? What did you think about it? Do you recommend any other graphic novels? What would you like me to read next? Um, I... I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this. I, I can say that. So, this is going to conclude this installment of the book report. And until next time, guys, happy reading. <laughs>